Hi, Golden Valley. Mr. March here. Wanted to speak with you briefly today about what music looks like here at Golden Valley through the grades, specifically ages 7, 9, and 12. Now, while most of my curriculum is informed by Rudolf Steiner and his ideas around music and the offering of music as a curriculum, I also draw from other sources, including the ORF method, which I've mentioned before, which was really uh, put together by Gunil de Kietman and Karl Orff of Germany and has become a worldwide uh, music pedagogy, sharing that value that Steiner has around uh, allowing the child to address the whole and become part of um, what they're learning before they break it down and move through the hands into the mind. And I also draw on uh, Zoltan Kodai. Kodai is another uh, method that's uh, worldwide in terms of music pedagogy. And the most familiar thing that might be for you to Kodai is uh, the use of solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Uh, while it's much older than he is, he was uh, one of the first teachers to really bring it into the general music curriculum and have great results with it in terms of um, choirs and teaching people how to sing together, sing on pitch and sight read and things like that. Uh, the other important element to me in this curriculum is that it represents the cultural diversity of the students that I have. And so that means every year there's new music that's brought and there's also music that's let go of. So that's always something that changes. I try and follow the teacher's blocks as they move through the year and what they're teaching because I want the music that the students are making to support and help them digest some of those blocks that they're learning, whether it's fairy tales in first grade or the Industrial Revolution in eighth grade. But back to music and what it looks like through the grades, beginning with uh, the seventh year or age seven typically uh, first grade, give or take a few years. Uh, and this is where Steiner's philosophy on music and really comes out because he believes at that age, a child really hasn't fully moved into this earth yet and that the music should, re should reflect that. It should be certainly of this earth, but maybe a little transcendent. And so he refers to something called the mood of the fifth. And, uh, <laughs> Those musicians at home know what I'm talking about. The fifth, that just means the space of notes between uh, these two notes. There's five of them. One, two, three, four, five. But in the first grade, we focus on those two particular notes and maybe a few others. And uh, if you play your black notes, if you have a piano at home, uh, you'll get a pentatonic scale and you'll know what I'm talking about. It's at that young age that the child's looking for safety, security, and we want to honor uh, them coming into themselves through the first and second grade, and we want to create music that does that. Now, uh, the flutes that they play at that age, uh, they start with a tone flute that has just one hole, sort of get that dexterity going, and then later in the first grade, uh, we introduce the pentatonic flute, Pentatonic flute is based on a five note scale and uh, they use this through the second grade. And we have songs that are specific to that flute and specific to those scales. You might think of uh, age seven and first and second, kindergarten first and second, as uh, the music sings me. The music sings me. It comes into me and, uh, and it sings through me. But when we hit the nine year change, that's really the beginning of I sing the music. You know, kids are be really coming into themselves. They see themselves as apart from the world, apart from their parents. There's some anxiety there, there's some inward thinking. And uh, the music reflects that as well. We start drawing more from uh, traditional folk songs and some uh, popular music. They're introduced to uh, their sea flute 
and the C flute is based on a C scale. So that's really the first time they're introduced to a, a, a regular uh, Western diatonic major scale. And uh, they'll start playing music that reflects that scale and using it. So they'll also start uh, to explore written music and writing scales down, knowing what a treble clef is, knowing what some of the symbols are in music. And uh, that all happens with the nine year change and gets progressively more layered as we move through third, fourth, and fifth. Uh, they start to sing in rounds, start experimenting with harmony. But true choral harmony singing really happens at that 12th year, and that's in sixth grade. Uh, the sixth grade, uh, they're ready to be seen. They're having some confidence. Uh, they're, they're, start, they're search for the truth about what is true and real. And paralleling that search for the truth is uh, more music and the laws of music. So that, that parallels that. They study the acoustics of music. They want to know how things work. Um, the recorder that comes in the sixth grade is the alto recorder, and it's a pretty good sized recorder. This is a, I might have skipped that. This is the soprano recorder, which usually comes in a fourth uh, grade, sometimes fifth, and they use that until sixth grade or the middle of sixth grade when we move to the alto. Now you'll see the difference here. Students will use this alto recorder through the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. It has uh, a really rich tone because of its larger size. Moving into the seventh and eighth grades, we add one more recorder to the arsenal, and that is the tenor recorder. So, at that point, there's usually a complement of three sizes, which really works for ensemble playing as we move into the later grades. I also want to say that I always, starting as early as fourth grade, uh, ask students if they're playing instruments at home, uh, because I'd like to make them a part of what we do here at school. And so that is true now, uh, as they are at home right now, and as I interact with them through the distance learning model. Uh, I'd hope to incorporate if some of them are playing piano, guitar, uh, stringed instruments, and whatnot, we'll incorporate that into the curriculum. As we move from sixth into the seventh grade, uh, it's more choral music, but uh, more complicated, more parts. And in the seventh and eighth grade, we focus uh, on music biographies, writing about the classical composers as well as world composers and contemporary composers and focus on personal composition and improvisation. Now it's with this idea of composition that I'm excited about in terms of this realm that we're in of distance learning because I think it opens a door for us in the seventh and eighth grades to perhaps introduce some musical software programs that will encourage kids and inspire them in terms of composition and improvisation. So you may see some of that if you have a 7th and 8th grader at home uh, when they receive their lessons. Anyway, that's a brief uh, overview of Music Through the Grades here at Golden Valley. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time hopefully in person.